Raise your right hand. Place your hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, Bruce Vincent Rauner. I, Bruce Vincent Rauner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Governor. The duties of the Office of Governor. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Governor. see what time it is. It's afternoon. Good afternoon, Illinois. Great day, Illinois. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. I want to begin by thanking my wife, Diana. She's my partner. She's my best friend. And she's going to be a tremendous first lady. Thank you. And thank you to our six kids who have endured a lot over the last two years and will be having to put up with a lot more over the next four. Thank you so much. I want to acknowledge Governor Pat Quinn for his years of service to the state and the people of Illinois. I'd like to recognize and thank our distinguished guests here today, Madam Chief Justice and distinguished members of the court, President Cullerton, Speaker Madigan, Leader Redonio, Leader Durkin, Attorney General Madigan, Secretary of State White, Comptroller Designate Munger, Treasurer Elect Frerix, Members of the General Assembly, members of the congressional delegation, Governor Edgar, thank you, Mayor Houston, Mayor Emanuel, Archbishop Supich, and Major General Crumry, and all the members of our National Guard, thank you for your service. Thank you, Evelyn, thank you, you're the best partner I could possibly have to transform our state government. And you'll be a terrific lieutenant governor. Thank you. I'd like to express my very deepest gratitude to our veterans and our servicemen and women here today and around the world. God bless you. Thank you for your service to our country. As governor, I will do everything in my power to support you. I also want to say a very special thank you to our police officers, our corrections officers, our firefighters, and all those who risk their lives to protect the families of Illinois. Thank you. 
I look forward to being an ally and an advocate for you and working very closely together. It's an honor to stand before you, before all the people of Illinois today. I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm privileged, and I'm excited. I love Illinois. I want ours to be a great state. I want ours to be a great home for every family here. And I'm ready to go to work for you. You know, as I've traveled our state over the last few years, I've met with tens of thousands of people. I've met with teachers and farmers. I've met with factory workers and coal miners, college students, retirees, the people who are the heart and soul of Illinois. In that process, I've met with thousands of small business owners. And in our discussions, I've been stunned, I've been shocked actually, by how many of them are frustrated trying to build their businesses here and are thinking about leaving. I visited one company called Keats Manufacturing in Wheeling. Back in 1958, Bert and Glenn Keats started a metal stamping company in a storefront on Cicero Avenue in Chicago. Their father had never made it past high school, but both of them made it through college, and they were eager to start out on their own. They had one employee and a couple machines. They worked long hours, a second job, and sacrificed much. But they made it, and their company took off. Today, Keats Manufacturing employs 110 Illinois workers and has nearly 75 machines running 24 hours a day, five days a week. The story of Bert and Glenn Keats was not an uncommon path in our state. And it wasn't just Chicago. And it wasn't just manufacturing. It was Peoria, it was Rockford, it was Decatur. It was agriculture, it was transportation, it was technology. Illinois was a place where people like Bert and Glenn Keats from all over the country and indeed from all over the world wanted to come because Illinois was a land of opportunity, almost without parallel in America. Today, Illinois is very different. The grandsons of Bert and Glenn Keats, I met with them, they tell me they couldn't have started their company in Illinois today. When their grandfather started the company, all its customers were in Illinois companies. They were all Illinois companies. They went door to door to find them. But today, none of their customers are Illinois companies. They have all left. And the grandsons told me that they themselves are feeling the pressure of high taxes and high regulation. Today, Illinois is not able to compete with our neighboring states. Our citizens are suffering because of it. And in many cases, they are up and leaving. Last year, last year we lost more people than any other state in America. And over the last 10 years, we have ranked right near the bottom of all 50 states for out migration to other states. People are leaving to find jobs or because they run companies and they're taking their jobs with them. Our local businesses look in every direction and see states that are more appealing. Lifelong Illinoisans look at their future and think maybe they can achieve more outside Illinois. You probably know a neighbor a coworker, or maybe even a son or a daughter who has said, I can do better somewhere else. It breaks your heart, but you know it's hard to argue with them. We need a booming economy that is pro-growth, pro-business, pro-job creation, or we won't have the resources to solve any of our other problems. We must state our state. Thank you.
Our state must become competitive again. In the weeks ahead, I'll be asking the legislature to work with me to pass a comprehensive jobs and economic package that will get Illinois working again. Let's get, let's get our sons and daughters to return home. We'll do it. One of the main reasons companies have been leaving Illinois is that they don't have confidence in the financial condition of our state. We are in the midst of a government financial crisis that has been building for decades. Its roots lie in bad decisions, bad practices, and bad management by state government. It is not a partisan creation. It is a truly bipartisan one. Our government has spent more than we could afford, borrowed money, and called it revenue. Rather than responsibly budgeting the money we had, we implemented programs we couldn't afford. In the face of a declining economy, we raised taxes. This hurt our economy even more, put more stress on our social safety net, and pushed more Illinoisans out of our state, leaving fewer taxpayers to support the government. As a result, today, Illinois is not as competitive as we need to be, and we cannot be as compassionate as we want to be. Some in government will be tempted to once again take the easy road and leave the real problems for another day and the next generation. But we cannot do that, because to do so, to conduct business as we've been doing it, would be morally corrupt. Instead, instead, we have an opportunity to accomplish something historic, to fix years of busted budgets and broken government, to forge a path toward long-term prosperity and a brighter future, to make Illinois the kind of state that others aspire to become, a national leader in job growth and education quality. <laughs> to achieve that will require sacrifice, sacrifice by all of us, politicians and interest groups, business and labor, those who pay for government and those who depend on government services and need us and who we need to support. Each person here today, and all those throughout the state, will be called upon to share in the sacrifice so that one day we can again share in Illinois' prosperity. We must all shake up our old ways of thinking. I promise you, our administration, this administration, will make our decisions based upon the next generation, not on the next election. I pledge to work on a bipartisan basis to drive results and get things done. We must be united in our willingness to sacrifice and do what is right, even if it is difficult. We must accept the challenge and the sacrifice, knowing that it will lead us to something greater. We must forget the days of feeling good about just making it through another year by patching over major problems with stitches that are bound to break.
Those stitches are now busting wide open. And we must begin taking immediate, decisive action. That's why today my first action as governor, first action today, I will be giving a directive every state by executive order, every state agency will be asked to freeze non-essential spending. I will ask every agency to review and report on every contract that's been signed since November 1st. And I will follow through on my personal pledge to reduce my, my own salary to a dollar and I will decline all benefits. We're setting a new tone today. Our state's crisis is not only financial. We have a moral crisis, an ethical crisis as well. We have a state government that too few have faith in, and that lack of faith is justified. It undermines people's willingness to sacrifice and do what is necessary to help the government in its mission. Illinoisans today see insider deals and cronyism rewarded. They see lobbyists writing bills for special interests and the taxpayers being left with the tab. They see government union bosses negotiating sweetheart deals across the table from governors they've spent tens of millions of dollars to help elect. That's a corrupt bargain. That's a corrupt bargain, and the people of Illinois are left to wonder, where do they fit in? Who's looking out for them and their families? Taxpayers' money belongs to them, not the government. We have a moral obligation to minimize how much we take and to ensure what we do take is spent efficiently and effectively. Every dollar we spend unnecessarily inside government is a dollar we can't put into classrooms and our social service providers or leave in the pockets of entrepreneurs and homeowners and hardworking families of Illinois. To the people of Illinois and the people outside of our state who've been reluctant to invest in Illinois because of the insider deals and cronyism, I say this, I'm nobody that nobody sent. And I've come to work for you. I've come to work for you and every family in our great state. I will send a clear signal to everyone in our state and to those watching from outside our borders that business as usual is over. It stops now. Tomorrow, I will sign an executive order that will improve ethics and accountability in the executive branch of state government. The, these actions and others to immediately follow will focus on regaining our state's good name and reputation. We must prove every day that we have learned our lessons and we've changed our ways. Now, this is a very emotional, personal issue for me. In everything we do, everything we do, we must ask ourselves, what does this mean for the next generation? For in order to thrive, we must prepare the next generation for success. From cradle to career, the people of Illinois deserve 
world-class educational opportunities. From early childhood and K through 12 schools, to vocational and technical training, to community colleges and higher ed, we need to invest adequately in every neighborhood. Next to being a mother or a father, teaching is the most important job in the world. And we must support our many good teachers. That means putting more, that means putting more directly into the classrooms, reforming the education bureaucracy, rolling back costly mandates, and giving more students access to great schools. A high quality education is essential for higher lifetime earnings, a competitive, world-class workforce, and strong economic growth. It's the key to bringing back the American dream for every family in Illinois, for making the American dream a reality for everyone here, a truly better life for the next generation. If we work together, Illinois can be great again. We have everything needed to thrive. Great location, the economic and cultural center of the Midwest, fertile farms, infrastructure, and most importantly, wonderful, hardworking people. We, we need the policies and the leadership to make us the best we can possibly be. In just three short years, this is an exciting time, in just three short years, our great state will be celebrating its 200th birthday. Yes, 2018 will be the bicentennial of Illinois. What a perfect time, what a perfect time these next few years will be to return our beloved state to its rightful place as a leader among the states of America. A state that, as we prepare for our bicentennial, is ready to seize the future. A state where not only manufacturing companies like the Keatses want to be, but where the next big things happen. A state where entrepreneurs want to be. A state where technology companies want to start. Where the next generation of manufacturing occurs. Where family farms that have made us the breadbasket for the world can pass from one generation to the next. Where young couples want to start their families and their children are inspired in their schools. Illinois is a state that truly embodies all that is great about America. Since the days of Lincoln, we've stood as a beacon of freedom and justice. Now let us embrace all that is wonderful about Illinois. The reasons we love it here. Our culture of hard work and responsibility. Grounded, solid values. Civic commitment and generosity. Harness our values so that our next century is one of prosperity. We can do that if we work together. Just as a family does when it faces tough times. Illinois is our home. Right now, our home is hurting. But home and family are worth sacrificing for, worth fighting for. Together, let's do the hard work to rebuild our home. I'm ready to go to work for you. I'm ready to fight for you. God bless you. God bless our great state of Illinois. And God bless America. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.